if you needed to construct the trussing, uh, say, you know, some scaffolding or any kind of framework of geometry, uh, it could take a little bit of time building all the different, uh, you know, pipes and, and pieces here. Uh, but there's actually a fast way of doing it with the particle line thickness uh, options in layout. So what we'll do is we'll close this down. And I've got just three basic objects here. I've got a box, uh, a ball, and then I've got this two-point poly chain that's just kind of a, a random little uh, squiggle here just so we can we can take a look at. If we wanted to, we could rail extrude to give thickness, but we're over in layout, and we're going to do it uh, with rendering. So what we can do is I'm going to hop over to the surface editor, and we're going to go to the surface that uh, I used for the ball and the box. And under the Advanced tab, if we check Render Outlines, and instead of giving it a positive number, let's give it a negative number. I'm going to put negative 10, and let's do a render. So now, instead of rendering the polygons, anywhere it's got an edge, anywhere between the two points, we're going to get this trussing. And, and the thicker we want it, we just need a, a, a negative number. So I'm actually going to open up the surface editor. And let's just go, we'll do both ways. We're going to go negative 15. So we'll go a little thicker. So we'll do an F9. Okay, so if I go page up, page down, we can see the difference. So the, the lower the number, so if I go negative 20, it's going to get thicker. If I go Let's do negative 5, so we'll go a little thinner. And we'll see that we've got thinner lines there. Now, I've got a different surface for the two-point poly chain. If we were to go over and do negative 10, we're not going to get the same result, okay? Because two-point polys work a little different. They're more like edges uh, because there's no uh, three-point or four-point or, or ingons here. We've got to work with, with edges. So it doesn't really matter if this is on or not, but I'm just going to set it back to default. And what we need to do for the two-point polys is we'll head over to Object, Properties, and under the Edges tab, we'll change the particle line thickness. I'm going to go ahead and change that to, well, negative 10 seems to work pretty good. Uh, for Actually, you know what? Negative 5 seems to look better than the negative 10. It, it looks better on the ball in the box. So let's try that. And there we go. Now we've got thickness we've got actual like piping it's like tubing on here and as you can see it renders fairly quick now one thing that's really nice is that this is an actual surface that we can work with so if we go over to our surface editor and I'm just gonna move a little faster by going to Windows presets and let's choose let's choose a surface I mean I'll just go ahead and choose the mirror surface and take a look at that okay so now I've got the mirror surface on the two-point poly. And if I, if I want, I can head over to the other surface for the box and ball. And we'll just go over to a different metal surface. Um, metal seems to be a, a fun one to work with. And we'll do the, the rippled chrome. Okay. And uh, because I copied the, the preset setting over, it also changed in the advanced tab. So I'm going to go and just change the render outlines. And for the, I think we like negative five. I think that one looked the, the best. And there we go. So just remember, for surfaces, you'll want to come over to the Advanced tab, check Render Outline, so make that active, and put a negative value in line size. And for two-point polys, you'll want to come over to Object Properties under the Edges tab and change the particle line thickness to a negative value. And you can get your trussing or your framework uh, quite easy without having to um, build it from scratch in Modeler. Here's an organic character that I've set the subpatch level to 1. And in the surface editor, I've went ahead and set up on all the different surfaces a negative 5. And we'll do a render of that. And you can see that it's making up a framework of them. I'm going to Shift-C, T for, for move, and just get a close-up. And we can see... Uh, a setup here um, using you know an organic character and replacing the surface with the trussing with the render outlines. Here's one last example showing the same object right on top of itself and one version of the object has the render outlines which is giving us all this trussing, all this framework and the other object is just a regular object with a, this blue reflective surface on it. I'm going to go ahead and 
and go to another render to show a close-up. So as you can see, because there's thickness to each one of these lines, it's it's able to, even though the geometry is right on top of each other, that's showing through, which allows us to come up with some really fun stuff where you can't see through to the other side, where you might have a lot of trussing that might be a little harder to read. Um, so this is just another example of using render outlines on geometry.